Hi there and welcome to today's Quentin Carpenter Nature of Flowers Photoshop tutorial. It's been a while since I made one of these tutorials so I thought I'd go back and revisit the double exposure for you. Okay to do this you are going to need a landscape photograph and a portrait photograph. You can see here I've got portrait and over this bit I've got the landscape. To do this the easy way I will talk you through using layer masks and how to apply any effects. Okay, so we'll start with a blank layer. You will then need to go File, Place Embedded, find your landscape picture and place it into the scene. You can move it freely around the screen so you've got it where you want it. I want it over to this side of the background. You will then need to Click over here and rasterize it so that you can then work on it. If you get a little square in the corner here, that means that it hasn't been rasterized, so you'll need to rasterize it before you can use it. And we will need to file, place, embed our portrait photograph as well. Hit place and press enter, and again, right click and rasterize the layer. They are now able to be edited. For the portrait I want to make it slightly bigger so I'm going to click on it and drag it so it's slightly larger like so. And I'll arrange it where I want it roughly. You can get an idea of what it's going to look like if you change the opacity and then you can maneuver it around the image to find the right place where you want to put it so you get an idea of what's happening in the background. What works really nicely with double six pages is if you have the background blending in really gracefully with the image. Once you're happy with roughly where you want it, you can move it again later, put it back to 100% opacity. There's one more thing we will need to add, and that is our grey background layer. So we'll click the plus button here, create a new layer, and drag it to the bottom. If we hide both of these, we can then select our gradient tool. Make sure we've got black and white set as the foreground and background color. And then we will carefully draw a diagonal line from one corner to the other to create a nice gray gradient. When we put the photograph of the face in front of it, you can see that the background here needs to be removed from the face. Now we could use the lasso tool and go all around it carefully or we could do it with the select feature and selecting the subject. If you do this, make sure we're on the right layer, select the subject and it will choose where the edges of the subject are for you. And then you just come down to here and click on the layer mask which creates the layer mask and you can see how nice that looks as it is. Now I always find with double exposures if you keep the portrait in colour it can get a bit distracting so I tend to change the portrait into black and white so we'll go to image adjustments and black and white over here. Click OK. I also like to adjust the levels and get the black black and the white white. So bring the black in slightly here and the white over slightly here so you've got a more of a contrasting image. Once you're happy with that, click OK. And then we will bring in the background and you can see already that they will work nicely together. What we will need to do is blend out this section of the background and blend out this section of the portrait to create that really nice blended effect. Now to do this we will need to add a layer mask to the background by clicking layer mask there. We will then need to use our paintbrush and we'll need to select a fairly large brush and make sure it's a soft round one here so that it fades in. So make sure it's fairly large And then, making sure we've selected the layer, we've got the black selected here. We are then going to fade out so it's level with the portrait. 
the background so we can see how it's going to look. Once we have done that, we then switch layers to the layer with the face and we can start to blend out the back parts of the head so that it starts to look like it's blending in with our background image. And we can fade out bits of it here and here and then we start to create that double exposure kind of vibe. Now we can make the brush smaller and we can do more detailed work. For example here, if we want to blend that bit particularly. But you'll notice the smaller the brush, the less feathering you get. So sometimes we're making the brush big again. And then just fading bits of that out in there. We also might want to have a look at this area down here. And again, with a smaller brush, we might want to start fading some of this out as well. Anything we're not happy about, maybe up here. Now, I think that looks really effective as it is, but you might want to play around with the placement. So, combining the move tool, we can then have a look at moving our image around, making sure we are on the layer with the mask, and we can play around with its position. And like I said before, how big or small it is, so we can have a look at how that looks as well. When we are happy with our image, we will go to File, Save As, and we will give it a name with Mate 2, and click Save. And then we have saved our image. We can do all sorts of things. This is a great um, for postcards or artworks, lots of different uses for double exposure. They're very, very popular. They're great on social medias as well. You can use it in coursework, all sorts of things you could do. Now, hopefully you've enjoyed today's tutorial and you can have a go with experimenting, making some of these yourself. If you are interested, you can um, come over to the channel and you can see that there are lots and lots of different videos on here, lots of different tutorials. Um, there's a playlist of Photoshop tutorials, which is great to have a look at. There's all sorts of other. So yeah, here's the, um, the Photoshop tutorial list. So you can see there are lots and lots of tutorials covering a whole range of different topics for Photoshop. Um, if you've enjoyed this video, obviously come over to the channel leave a comment, put a thumbs up, etc, etc. And um, thank you very much for watching. And have a great rest of your day. And goodbye. Thank you for watching.